We continue in chapter 7. Chapter 7, in one word, is Yehuda, unity. Speaking about two types of unity of God, a higher one and a lower one. The higher one is based on Shema Yisrael, here Israel. Hashem is our God. Hashem is one. Higher level of unity, as opposed to the lower level of unity, is the phrase that comes after that that we say daily in the Shema. Baruch Shem Kavayd Malchus Um Blessed is your name and your kingship forever. And as we explained yesterday, the relationship between Echad Ba'ed, um, a higher unity and a lower unity. And we gave uh, a metaphor to understand this unity. I have a hand. I could look at my hand in two different ways. I could look that I have a hand that accomplishes many different things. It can throw a ball very fast. It can um, stretch out and um, help somebody. It can write a creative poem. It could um, make dinner. And the ultimate thing it could do is a mitzvah. Is a mitzvah. Mitzvah, for example, reaching out and giving charity, helping out another. That's one way to look at your hand. Another way to look at your hand is that God had a desire for mitzvah. Why? Just because. He wants mitzvah. One mitzvah he wants, and in particular, is, is charity. And he wants that mitzvah to be fulfilled. Hmm. Well, in order that that mitzvah should be fulfilled, there has to be a world. There has to be people. There has to be people that have and people that don't have. And you have to have a, pe a person with a hand so they could stretch out, reach out to another, and give. So the only reason the there is an existence of the hand is to reach out and to do a mitzvah, for mitzvah. Because that's all, that's the only reason why God created it. As he didn't create it, that there is a, an idea of, you know, throwing a ball. Unless throwing that ball is also a mitzvah. It can be, of course. You know, if, if uh, the child needs your attention and the child is playing with a ball and says, Father, Mother, could you throw the ball to me? So in raising your child, it could be then become, you know, what God needs of you to do. Uh, the good thing he needs you to do at that moment Right? But the idea is mitzvah, right? So charity is, you know, is the good metaphor for this. So you're reaching out and you're giving. Why? Because it's the only reason why it was created? Or that there's different things that my hand can do, then the greatest thing it can do is mitzvah. That, those two ways are two different ways to understand um, the unity and oneness of God. The higher level is that there's only God's will, mitzvah. So my hand is only an expression of mitzvah, giving charity, and the like. The first way, and that's called Yehud Yilo, a higher level of unity. The first way explained is Yehud Tata, the lower level, is that there's a world and there's... Uh, there's a world and there's me and there's my hand and my hand has many different things it could accomplish. Creative writing and so on and so forth as we said. The greatest thing is mitzvah. It's also unity and oneness, but there's a reality to the hand that is um, not related. You know, there's a reality to the, to the hand, period. And that's a lower level of unity. So, let us explain further this idea. We explain that God created the world because he wants a relationship. And that relationship is like a king who wants a nation. 
a nation, people that are distant is what a nation, a king cannot be a king over his children. He can't even be a king over his, um, the princesses and the ministers and so on. There needs to be a nation that are distant, distant in spiritual, uh, uh, spiritually distant from the king. Talking about a real concept of a king. And therefore the king wants his relationship. In this relationship, there are two dimensions. Based on the fact that there are two dimensions to kingship, to royalty, to sovereignty. On the one hand, the king is exalted and is completely beyond the people. Exalted in such a way head and shoulders above and beyond, again, in spirit. Exalted in a manner that is, the king is totally uh, within the divine. And that's why a king, a true king, is uh, divine appointed and divine inspired. Totally exalted in, the, in their source, in God, so much so that when a Jewish king bows by the Amida, by the private uh, prayer to God, they bow and they don't get up. You know why they don't get up? They can't get up because they're so nullified. They're so exalted in their source and one with their source. All they feel is their source in the divine and not themselves. They don't feel any sense of selfhood. That's the higher level of the king or the exalted level but then there is the function of the king what's the function of the king to be there for the people to reach out to the people to provide for the people everything that they need total self nullification total selflessness to be able to give to the people the needs of the people this is a true king. What's an example of a true king? The Rebbe. A Rebbe is a melech, is a king. In the sense that they're head and shoulders beyond the people. Spiritually exalted in their source, so nullified that they have no sense of self. No sense of self. Because they're totally bound up with the divine. That's the Alter Rebbe, our teacher of Tanya. That's our dear Rebbe of this generation. And yet at the same time, there's another quality that they have. They're not just exalted in their source and totally nullified to their divine source. They don't remain there merely, but then they come down to the people to be there a service to the people, totally uh, selfless in their giving to the needs of the people. So our Rebbe is totally there selfless to give the spiritual needs and material needs of whatever is necessary to the people. That's a true king. That's a Jewish concept of a king. Okay, so what does that have to do with unity of God? It follows. There's two levels of unity, and they are an expression of the divine attribute of malchus, of royalty, of kingship. Kingship, royalty, malchus is the last of the ten divine attributes. So on the one hand, it is, it, when it's exalted, it rises up to its source, into the divine attributes beyond it, and it also comes down into creation, meaning in the concept of the creative power to come into creation, into otherness. So, creation is defined by what? 
time and space. So the attribute of Malchus has a relationship to time and space, meaning creation, the fundament of creation, in a manner that it's exalted in its source. In its source, is there time and space? No. There's no time and space. There's no, there, there's no reality in a sense of otherness of creation. Total self-abnegation, total self-nullification, like the ray of sun within the sun. So that's the first, the higher level of unity. What was the metaphor for that? The hand. That the hand is only an extension of mitzvah. Its only reality is mitzvah. Which means to bind itself to God through mitzvah. Charity, for example. That's the higher level. That, for those who can see this, in the, uh, I know it might be backwards for some, I think on a computer it's not, I think on a phone it is, is Hashem's name, which is transcendent of time and space, and this is Adnai, the attribute of Malchus, as it's in the name of God, in transcendence, in exaltedness, and therefore, its relationship to the world is, there's no world. There's only a reality of God. What does that mean for me and you? There's only a reality of my existence is only as an extension of God and doing the mitzvah. That's the higher level of unity. The lower level of unity I don't have this over here an example. See here, Malchus is absorbed in its source of God's name. It's the other way around. Hashem's name, Adai Shem, is on top, and Havaya is inside the name. That is the way the king comes down and is relating and serving the people as a metaphor. That is the way the hand is coming to do, but has a reality as a hand. And its ultimate is to, is to do a mitzvah. What does that mean in the divine order of things? It means the attribute of malchus, of kingship, of sovereignty, is relating to time and space now, to creation. It's relating to it. There's a reality to creation. There's a reality to time and space. But what is it? Nothing else but God. But that's a lower level because there's a relationship to creation. There's a relationship to time and space. There's a reality to it. What is its reality ultimately? God. There is a reality to the hand. But what is the ultimate re reality? Mitzvah. Godliness. Those are the two levels. So in Hasidic terminology, the higher level is called bitl bimitsiyas, a nullification of being. It's like the righteous person exalted in their source, the, the Rebbe, exalted in their source, that there's no me. There's no sense of selfhood. Total only sense of the divine that they find themselves in. The lower level is, there's a sense of, of self. But what is the self? Divine. It's divine. A lower level, but a um, 
the level of uh, um, lower. We're going to go into greater detail on what, uh, what all this means, but uh, both are very lofty levels. <laughs> all right. Um, looking, seeing if there are any questions and uh, Tarek, I'm not exactly certain what your question is. Not clear. Any other questions? I hope that that was clear. Pretty profound idea. Um, more to come on this profundity. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from my home in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day, a good day of Shabbos, and a wonderful, good Shabbos. Be well, everyone.